stay with that breaking news from India because uh, the country is celebrating the rescue of all 41 construction workers who'd been trapped inside a collapsed Himalayan tunnel for the last 17 days. Let me show you the pictures because this was the first worker to be brought out, uh, wheeled on a stretcher initially through that evacuation pipe, pushed through the rubble. Well, the men, as you can see, were greeted by officials overseeing the operation in the north of the country. The workers, who are mostly in their 20s, are said to be in good health. They've been taken by ambulance to a nearby hospital for a full medical assessment. It follows a rescue operation lasting 400 hours, which has been plagued by multiple setbacks, including the repeated breakdown of drills. Let me take you to the live pictures first of all, because uh, there is the entrance of that tunnel area, and that's where the focus of the operation has been. You can't see the exact area where finally those uh, hand drillers uh, managed to actually get through the debris, push through just a small pipe, and then that was the pipe that was actually used to bring out on wheeled stretchers uh, one by one the men. Let me show you some of the pictures from just the moments after those men got out to the garlands going round them. That's the chief minister welcoming one by one as the men came out. Some absolutely beaming smiles, but others looking rather shell-shocked after what they've been through. Uh, well, there's one of the huge smiles, but uh, it, it has been such a desperate rescue operation at times with huge setbacks. And as the days stretched out for the families, it was absolutely agonizing. But of course, there was good news along the way because they did manage to get uh, pipes down to the, the larger area where the men were holed up and that meant they could pump oxygen down, they could get food down, they could get water down, even communications. Those men in the last few days able to actually make phone calls, look at the relief on those faces, but make phone calls with family members and talk to them and of course be told that uh, the rescue teams were getting ever closer. So those some of the pictures in the immediate moments and you can still see some of the clapping by uh, those people there but uh, back to the live shot and and as our correspondents were taking us through the men now being medically assessed there was uh, uh, stuff done immediately as they came out but they have now been taken to the medical assessment centers uh, later on they'll be taken to hospitals nearby so let's talk once again to our south asia regional editor Ambrasan Etherajan, who's been monitoring everything we've been seeing over the last couple of hours well the last couple of hours uh, huge huge success after multiple multiple failures It's a great news for all those involved, for the workers, the relatives, the families, and the rescue teams, and for the whole country. And this is one story which can travel across the borders. This is a story about human endurance and human effort to rescue these people against nature. You're fighting against the elements here. And so it is a big success story for all those involved in this particular uh, rescue process for the last 17 days. And uh, this particular story had so many twists and turns uh, because of uh, repeated machine breakdowns and the weather changing, and they were facing all kinds of challenges and reaching this place itself uh, was a challenge for the huge machinery. So various agencies coordinated and you see uh, that 41 workers are now finally out. Uh, of this uh, tunnel through this pipe where they were wheeled stretchers were used to bring them out and bringing in much relief and happiness uh, for all those involved in this entire process. So uh, the whole country uh, is celebrating now with these 41 workers uh, being rescued. It is one of those uh, very few stories where you have this uh, positive ending uh, despite knowing that they are fighting against uh, a huge natural challenge of 60 meters of debris and anything could have gone wrong at any point of time. For example, when they decided to do this vertical drilling from top of the tunnel after the machines broke down, there were concerns. You know, you have to go through really 90 meters. That means there could be some water source, uh, some kind of a spring coming out and then that could flood the tunnel. So that kind of uh, fear was always there for people, how, whether it can also lead to another landslide. So 
among all those challenges and difficulties and uh, you know these workers have been rescued it is also a sign of uh, remarkable resilience and endurance and how these 41 workers kept uh, themselves busy occupied without losing hope without having any breakdowns and all they wanted was to come out alive and see their loved ones and that has happened uh, bringing in joy and happiness it was more like a you know celebratory atmosphere outside this tunnel where there was a small temple and uh, people were shouting in joy so it is a very welcome welcome event for all those concerned and just briefly because you touched upon it uh, they tried so many different tactics but in the end it, it was simply done manually those final meters were done by hand weren't they and we saw uh, a, a little earlier just one of the groups of rescue workers just go through the shots on the screen punching the air because it was such a success in the end finally when they used that tactic I mean, I can as well imagine when they, you know, when they had this breakthrough, the last centimeters or the meter, when they were able to break the debris and go to the other side, what kind of happiness and relief would have been for the guy who was doing it and also for the workers. Now, after the machines, they broke down the huge ones, the blades got stuck in this uh, debris and uh, iron uh, rods. Then they ended up using the rat hole uh, miners. They were using these hand drills uh, to go through this last 10 meters. It was challenging, very difficult, uh, but then they ended up using this technique to have these final meters, and that proved the difference. That made a lot of difference in terms of reaching out. People were expecting that it would take at least two to three days more uh, by using these uh, manual drilling, these rat hole miners, but then finally they were able to do it, and that made the big difference. Ambrosan, uh, thanks once again. We'll talk again in the uh, coming minutes as we continue to stay with uh, the pictures, all of this in the aftermath of those 41 actually getting out. It was quite quick in the end, one by one, once they had uh, established contact, once they'd got that tunnel in place, once they got these wheeled stretchers working one by one, they got them out pretty quickly uh, after 17 days. And you can see the relief as they are just uh, going past all those officials and a group of rescue workers, but ultimately getting to the ambulances before being whisked away. Let's talk to Anjana Karumathil as we continue to watch these pictures, who is Professor of Labour Practice at the Indian Institute of Management. She's an expert on the Indian labour market and its malpractices. Uh, thanks so much for being here with us. Uh, your headline thought, uh, I suppose, let's reflect on the joy, first of all, because this is uh, such a triumph uh, given all the adversity. Yes, indeed. A, a, a day of great joy and relief for us in India. Now, tell me a little more about the industry we're talking about and its history and the sort of questions that you think will be raised now once we get through this phase of, of the relief and joy. Yes, I'm, I'm very glad indeed that this incident has a good, happy ending. I wish I could say the same of, of the several other construction-related incidents that happen in India. The, uh, the construction fatality rate in India is alarmingly high. According to the report by the International Labour Organization, construction worker fatality in India is the highest worldwide. And given the rate at which construction is increasing, both residentially and commercially, these kinds of accidents are more likely to happen. This raises important questions on what went wrong and what can we do to make sure that these kinds of incidents do not happen again. I believe that there are several factors within the Indian construction industry that make the construction worker a, a, a vulnerable population, a, a targeted population whose efforts are devalued in the larger ecosystem of the Indian construction industry. There is also a need for increased safety equipment as well as safety education for the construction workers. What can we do to make sure they are better educated, better prepared, and what kind of technology can we use to ensure that these kinds of traumatic incidents do not occur as frequently as they do now? These are important <laughs> questions that I believe need to be answered. They are important questions and a long list of questions as you 
you describe this group as a, a vulnerable group, but they have been asked for year upon year, decade upon decade. Uh, do you realistically think there's any likelihood of change? It is, it is uh, an interesting question. The, 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 there are two sides to this issue. On the one hand, the government has put in place several regulations to help them to ensure that they achieve, get the minimum wage and to make sure that they have basic uh, social security like protection. That said, on the other hand, there is a need for us to strengthen our implementation framework to make sure that these laws are being implemented in the way that they need to be. The fact that mo most of the construction worker population in India comprises of migrant laborers, the profile is typical of, the, of all, the, all the people that were just rescued in their late 20s, male and illiterate, people that are always on the go. For this kind of population, their association with an employer is transient, their association with a labor agency is transient, and they work primarily in the informal sector. So what that means is they do not necessarily have a written contract. They are day wage laborers. Because of that, they said automatically become ineligible for many of the legal protections that our law gives them. And it is, it is because of all of these, these factors coming together. Add to that the illiteracy and the difficulty to make them understand what they need to know for their own safety and security. These factors come together to make sure that, uh, that they are a targeted population within the construction ecosystem. Is anything likely to change? Yes, it can change with the right kind of education and the right kind of implementation framework put in place by the government.